Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to. Kitty! No! Well. Kitty! We have a complaining cat. All right, let's try this again. Okay. Welcome to Electro Online. In this video, we're going to talk about what a cross product actually is in the real world. And so here's a real life example, a real world example of a cross product. Now remember that a cross product is also called a vector product because it's the product between two vectors and the result of a vector product is another vector as opposed to a dot product where the result of a dot product, the multiplication of two vectors via dot product gives you a scalar, doesn't give you a vector. So there's the difference already. And in this real world example, we're going to imagine that we have a magnetic field present which is directed into the negative x direction as we've drawn here. It's kind of difficult to do that. So here we have it redrawn where we have the back of an arrow showing that the magnetic field is into the board. So here we assume that in this direction, that's a positive x direction, into the board is the negative x direction. So the magnetic field can be defined as the magnitude of the field times the negative x direction or the negative i direction. B is a symbol that we use to indicate the magnetic field. Now we have a charged particle, a positive charged particle with charge Q moving through the field from left to right, which means in the positive y direction with a velocity V. So the velocity can be expressed as the magnitude of the velocity times the direction, which is the positive y direction with a unit vector. Of course, we can also write the positive j direction. That will then result in a force which is then going to be directed in the z direction or the k directions. Here's the magnitude of force in the z direction. Well, we know that from experiment, right? We've experimented with that. We had charged particles moving through a magnetic field and we see that they then get pushed into a certain direction. So we can assume that the force is acting this way because what will happen is the particle will start moving around in a circular path like this because the force will keep acting perpendicular to the motion as it's moving through the magnetic field. So what we're going to do here is show how the cross product actually helps us figure out what the magnitude of the force is and the direction of the force. First of all, the direction of the force. It turns out that we, when we find that the magnitude of the force is equal to the size of the charge times the cross product of the, of the velocity of the particle and the strength of the magnetic field. The direction of the force is then determined by the right hand rule. So you take your right hand, you point your fingers in the direction of the velocity, then you curl your fingers in the direction of the B field, which is into the board, and your thumb points in the direction of the force. So it's velocity cross the magnetic field, and the thumb points in the direction of the resulting force. And that's how the cross product works. The magnitude of the force can be found by taking the charge and multiplying times the magnitude of the cross product, which is V times B, the magnitude of the velocity, times the magnitude of the magnetic field, times the sine of the angle between the two. So we have the velocity in this direction, the magnetic field in this direction, which means that the angle between them is 90 degrees. So it becomes VB times the sine of 90 degrees, which is equal to 1. So it turns out that the magnitude of the force is simply equal to QVB. The magnitude of the velocity times the magnetic field times the magnitude of the charge. So now let's go ahead and let's see how that then works out when we actually do the cross product. So we can say that the force is equal to the charge multiplied times the cross product of V cross B. So V cross B, that means we have to have I, J, K here. The components of the velocity, well, since the velocity only has a component in the Y direction, that means the X direction and the Z direction have zero components. And in the Y direction, we have a component equal to V. That's the magnitude of velocity in the Y direction. And then the magnitude of the magnetic field B well, that's going to be directed in the negative x direction, so that's a negative b, and no components in the y or the z direction. So this should give us the vector representing the force acting on the particle as it's moving through the magnetic field. So this becomes equal to q times i multiplied times 
v times 0, so that would be v times 0 minus 0 times 0. I'm just writing out so you can see how this works. So that would be uh, the i component of the force minus j, remember that the signs alternate, times, here would be 0 times 0 minus 0 times negative b. And then we have plus the k component. And with the k component, we will have something because first we have 0 times 0 times 0, zero minus but now we multiply v times a negative b. So let me move this charge here. So we have b v times, there's my b. There we go. And the whole thing is multiplied times q. Now notice that these two terms do not survive. They're both 0. So this term goes to 0. This term goes to 0. This is the only surviving term. So that means that the force is equal to the charge q multiplied times and here we have minus times the minus, that becomes plus. So multiply times v times b in the k direction. So you can see that the resultant is a vector as well. There's the magnitude of the vector, qvb, as we saw over here, the magnitude of the vector. And the direction of the vector, it's in the positive z direction or the k direction. And there's a real life example, a real world example of how we actually use cross products or vector products in real scenarios. That's how it's done.